Good morning, students. Am I audible to every one of you? Yes, students. Am I audible to every one of you? Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So let us start. Okay. Today I'll basically show you a presentation on beams. So actually, what happens is that I just wanted you to make fami you familiarize about what is actually beam is. In the last class we have been discussing all these things, right? And many of you might have some doubts. So this in this type, I'll just uh, make you familiarize with uh, beams. Okay. So without waiting, let us start. First of all, we have applied and reactive forces. So the forces that are applied on a body, they can be divided into two types, primary, okay, in primary type. Number one is applied and number two is reactive. So what is actually applied forces? Now look, in a structure, Applied forces means the forces which are applied to the structure. Got it? That means uh, there may be certain loads, dead load, light load. Okay. So those are what? Those are the applied forces. Now coming to the next is what? Next is your reactive forces. So reactive forces means what? The reactions that are being actually generated. Hmm? now in case of support now a beam that may be simply supported that may be like cantilever that may be overhanging that may be continuous so in this kind of beams there are lots of supports so the supports are what basically connect structures that means these are structures that are basically used to connect the beam or whatever may uh, be with the ground okay so they are mainly capable of restricting the external forces that are acting on the beam huh. so these are known as supports now look if you try to hang something Ah, if you try to hang something, then what happens is you have to hang it with the help of what? Certain supports, right? So those are actually the different types of supports. Huh? Now let us go. Now look, in basically in beams, for beams, what happens is that they are are three type of supports that are in beams number one is roller number two is hinge, and number three is fixed what is roller support first of all so roller support means what roller support is the type of support in which Hello, can you all hear me? Can you all hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So first of all, there is what? There is roller support. Roller support means these are the supports that are 
present in the form of a roller now look at this so if you see this figure hmm, if you see here if you see here okay so these are what these are two rollers right so that means what that means what these rollers are basically the supports of the beam suppose if you assume this to be a beam then that means what these are the two roller supports now look this roller supports can be surface of the roller support can be horizontal vertical or sloped at any angle okay so the supports can be horizontal vertical or sloped at any angle look at this figure now this is what horizontal this is what vertical right i am using a pointer can you see the pointer hello red one like a laser yeah like a laser okay that's good yeah so the surface can be what horizontal vertical or sloped at any angle hmm. now the resulting reaction force if you all are aware from newton's third law you all know na, every action has an equal and opposite reaction right so if every action has an equal and opposite reaction then what happens can you all say what happens suppose there is a force i mean there is this support right so definitely this bottom part will give some reaction from the top load because if a load is applied from here huh, if you apply from here that means suppose someone is standing on here huh, in this part then to counteract this huh, so there will be an opposing force right so these two opposing forces will be present and they are what balancing each other hmm. So this is what the resulting reaction is for ruler support. Got it. Now, if you come to the next one, this is basically a practical example of ruler. Suppose these are all rollers, right? So in this way, this roller is present then this will be the reaction that will be given okay look at this now if you see uh, for this time only learn only the basics okay we'll go in details so you can we'll have solid mechanics in the next semester so we'll be going in details in that course right now you just learn about the basics look if this is the roller because this is a wheel so wheel can be considered as a roller right so here it is giving some reactions now if you can see from the derivation this may be horizontal or sometimes this may be what inclined also so this is what roller supports are actually hmm. now we go to what in support we go to the next one which is called in support what is actually in support hmm. so hinge is what hinge is a hinge is what hinge can Resist both vertical and horizontal forces, but not a moment. Now, moment means what? Moment was force into perpendicular distance, right? Now, if you can see in the next slide, look at this. So, here, if there are some circular members present, then we could have denoted it as a roller. But right now, it is not a roller, but it is a hinge. So, in hinge support, what happens? It has can resist both vertical and horizontal look for this portion this portion here 
there may be behavior forces from this side as well as this side so they if a hinge is there then it can resist both this but it cannot resist moments okay so this is a practical example of a hinge we have already always seen these things in your doors this is basically a practical example of hinge suppose okay door hinge so these are certain door hinges if you can see here okay now the difference between the hinge and roller how will actually the reactions take place now here ah, if you see figure b and figure d figure a is what figure a is a hinge support and figure c is what a roller support got it so if these two are different then what happens is that these two are different then what happens is that there are two reactions that are being applied this one and this one right these are the two reactions that are being applied then what happens in case of a hinge support there are, it can resist both vertical and horizontal what do you call it forces but in case of roller what happens it can resist only the force that is perpendicular below right so this is what the roller is all about now there is the third one so you got to know means roller now there is the third one which is called fixed support right what is actually a fixed support hmm. suppose a structure or a beam is fixed huh, in the support you can see here right so if it is fixed then what happens is that these two fixed support will be able like in roller it was only one reaction it can resist now in hinge it was in two now in fix what depends if the support is fixed then it can resist both that means what the horizontal particle as well as we can see there is the symbol of this this is what moment so it can resist all the three now this is a typical example of a fixed beam so if you see this example of a fixed beam so this is the fixed beam so this can resist actually horizontal particle and moments all these three can be resisted by this okay now if you go to the next can you see this bridge can you see this bridge hello hello yes sir yeah. so in this bridge what happens this is if this is a fixed support here at this end got it at this end and at this end then this can resist for this side from this side as well as the moments that's simple now We can go to the definition of beams. So what is what are the different types of beams? So a beam is a in the last class we discussed right a beam is a structural member that is designed to support the applied load and it resists the applied loading by a combination of internal transverse shear force and spending moment. So basically, what is a beam? So a beam is a structural member. Huh? It is that structural member which is capable of resisting the applied loading okay 
Now, a beam is actually the most important structure that is used widely for support. Huh. And it is almost used in all structures. A beam is very much essential in all structures. If you construct any kind of structures. Huh. Now, look at this. If you see the figure, this is a beam. And this is the load that is being applied. Okay. So in beams, what happens? Now this is, if you see, consider this to be a beam, so the loads are what? Vertical, right? And the surfaces are horizontal. Now can you see the beam of your house? Now, if you're inside your house, if you see above, you will see those beams. Like this, uh, where it is. In the, in the last class I showed you, no? Can you recall which are the beams of your house? Hello? Yes, sir. Yeah. So those beams, what happens? In those beams, as the definition says, the beams are always horizontal, but the supports are what? Vertical. Right? So this is the difference. So the beams are mainly capable of what? Transmitting the loads. So the action that is involved in beams are mainly shear force and bending moment. Okay. So the actions that are involved in beams are mainly. Now if you see the type of beams in the last class also, we have discussed about it. So what are the different types of beams actually? Hmm. Number one is what? Cantilever. Number two is simply supported. Number three overhanging. Number four fixed. And number five continuous. So now, first of all, cantilever. Huh. What is a cantilever beam actually? Look at this figure. If you see this figure, what happens is that the one end of the beam is fixed, while the other end is what? Free. Now the load, someone asked me in the last class, whether the load can be applied only in the, what do you call it? End or in the middle, everywhere you can, the load can be applied. The load combinations may be also different. Right, so the beam is fixed at one end and it is free like this. This is basically known as a cantilever beam. Now we go to the next one. If you see, these are the practical examples of a cantilever beam. Look, in the railway signals, huh? you all will see like this a projecting structure, like this, look, it is fixed now, so this is fixed here, and it is overhanging here, and the load is applied everywhere, so this can be an UDL, and this can be a point load, if you think like this, now here also, the same thing is there, the beam is there, okay, so these are examples of what? Cantilever. Now we go to what the next one that is a simply supported beam, right? So in a simply supported beam, if you see the beam is simply supported, that means what there is no fixing. Now, if you can see in the, the right side where the pointer is, so in that kind of uh, structure, what it is actually that. The plank is simply there and it is simply supported at this end and at this end. So this type of beams are called simply supported. Now we go to the next one. What is actually fixed beam? Now a fixed beam is what? In our homes, the beams that are present actually are fixed beam. Why fixed beam? If you see the above, these are basically fixed. No? So if it is in a single room, it is fixed. And if it is in a multiple room, if it is continuous, then you call it a continuous beam. So basically this end and this end are what fixed so we call it a fixed beam now overhanging beam what is actually overhanging beam 
so if you can recall this thing overhanging beam means what suppose the beam is supported by two supports hmm? now if the beam is supported by two supports so what will happen some portion of the beam is projecting outwards right if some portion of the beam is projecting outwards then this is known as a what overhanging beam okay so this is basically an overhanging beam now if you see if you see the next one look at this this is a foot bridge support okay now this portion the portion which is thus projecting outwards or maybe of this home also so these are overhangings okay now we go to the next one which is called a continuous beam in this continuous beam what happens is that if you see here this is a continuous structures right now here there are supports one two three four multiple supports so this is basically an example of continuous beam is it clear up to this yes sir clear now everyone yes sir okay so now we'll go to what the next topic what is that it is types of loads so what are actually the different types of loads the types of loads can be defined as concentrated loads first of all what is concentrated loads or point load also they are called so these two loads this one this is a what this is a beam right what kind of beam it is can anyone say from the figure can anyone say what kind of beam it is simple support na huh? simply supported very good this is a simply supported beam so the loads look at this load it is acting at a point right it is acting at a point so this kind of loads are called as basically point load or concentrated loads clear okay yes sir mm. so now apart from point load there is another type of load which is called distributed loads or maybe uniformly distributed loads now look if you see here in this beam in this beam there is a point load that is acting right so if there is a point load that is acting this is called a concentrated or point load now here if you can see this is a beam right so in this type of beam what happens the load is in the whole beam so this type of beam is called udl or uniformly distributed load so this is basically an illustration of udl now remember one thing hmm. in our all system of forces or in our all structures basically we have udl or uniformly distributed load in maximum cases okay so this is what is very important now the next one is yesterday we discussed last class uniform sure. yeah hello yeah say hello 
according to uh, sir according to your uh, your presentation so we can say that uh, if there are a lot of many uh, more than uh, one point hmm. load then we can call as a uniformly distributed load sir. no 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 why this is the different thing do not go to the figure this is the uniformly nee. distributed load means what load pura beam ke upar distributed hai uniformly samjha ek point load if there may be so, like this also look there are two point loads here na so this is what there are two point loads but you cannot say this is an uniformly distributed right but here look it is present all over the beam and the same amount of load is present so that is known as an uniformly distributed yeah say same as that you want to show okay sir अभी समझ में आया हां वो फिगर थोड़ा कंफ्यूज कौन सा फिगर ये फिगर ऐसे ही ड्रॉ करने सकते हैं ना ठीक है ठीक है सर ना ड्रॉ तो डिफरेंटली भी कर सकता है तुम ऐसा सपोज तुम लोग ऐसा ड्रॉ कर सकते हैं ना मैं दिखाता हूं आपको सपोज ये एक बीम है हां तो इधर में तुम लोग ऐसे ड्रॉ करो ना सो दिस इज बेसिकली व्हाट वी ड्रॉ इन आवर कॉपीज एक्चुअली for determining uniformly distributed load so this is the beam these are the two supports right so this is what uniformly or it is called as u d l now you can see here for the other type of loads it is in suppose newton or kilo newton remember Ah. Huh. Now, but in UDL, what it is? But in case of UDL, it is Newton per meter. Agar load copy me agar exam me agar esa ya ki load Newton per meter ya fir kilo Newton per meter hai. So, uska matlab samaj lena tum log UDL hai. Why UDL? Because suppose this is the distance between this and this is l meters so if it is l meter here and here then what happens so one for one meter it is something right so for one meter it is something so for l meter it will be l something Got it? Now clear? Clear here, Abhi? Yes, sir. So this is what the basic thing, fundamental. Huh. Now UVL. Look at this UVL. Now in UDL, it is per meter. So it will be same towards the entire length. But in case of UVL, it is not same. It is totally different. Look, here it may be 1 Newton. Here it may be 2, here it may be 3, here it may be 5. So it is varying, but it is uniformly varying. So this type of beam is known, uh, load is known as what? Uniformly varying load. Now, look, once the loads are applied, so once after the load is applied, what actually the load do load agar beam may apply hota to load what happens to the structure you may be asking that question so the things that happen mainly is bending can you see the bending word here and shear now what happens suppose this load is applied here now if you take a i'm giving a simple example take two books and take one long scale in between those books now if you try to push with your finger like this if these are the books so what will happen it will bend na? yes or no so if it will bend then what will happen the bending reactions will come from that only we develop what we find out the bending moment then it will come to the bending moment thing and then after that what it comes is shear Sure means what in the hmm. 
last class also we decided shear means what it is tearing away something is being tear torn away then it is known as shear so here in the figure you can see this is a shear not so this is what this is the original beam if in white dotted lines now once load is applied it gets bending right and here it is the original one now once load is applied here it gets torn away or it gets broken down in this part so this is known as what shear so we'll discuss about this any doubt may chuba no sir okay let us stop uh, the, the this presentation till here we'll go to the theory part now again okay then only we'll come to the next uh, these things huh. so now are you clear with uh, what i has been taught now or you have any doubts Is it clear? Hmm? Any doubt? Students, I'm asking you. No doubt, no? No, sir. Okay. So we'll go. Let's do one thing. Can you see the lectures? Can you see the presentation? Hello, can you see the presentation? Yes. Huh? No, sir, nothing. Wait, wait. No, sir, nothing. Wait a minute. Now? Now? Yes, sir. Okay, just now we discussed regarding sense the terms shear force and bending moments right yes or no so what is the shear force at the last class we discussed regarding the shear force and bending moment right shear force is what the algebraic sum of the vertical forces at any section of the beam to the right or left side of the section is known as shear force and bending moment is what algebraic sum of all the moments of the forces that is right in right or left now remember now remember this figure now for shear force what is happening we are having certain sign conventions okay so we are having certain sign conventions that means what in shear force we will be having 
as you can see in the figure certain sign conventions now look this now look this suppose this is the beam now in this beam what happens we consider two section one section that means what we basically cut the beam into half as shown in figure as shown here we basically cut the beam into half now if the force systems are in this manner it is in what clockwise if you can see is it clockwise or not like this no the force is coming yes or no you can see it, it is clockwise or not this is coming from bottom it is coming like this and it is going down so it is what basically clockwise yes or no so in clockwise what so in clockwise it is what positive and similarly if you can see here if you can see here it is what this is coming down and this is going up so this is what anti-clockwise so in this anti-clockwise case so it is like this right so it is what clockwise this one is clockwise and this one is what anti-clockwise so clockwise is considered to be a positive and anti-clockwise is considered to be a negative now if you go to this next one bending moment so what is the bending moment sum on the moments that is acting either right or left side of the structure now in case of bending moment what happens we have positive and negative look in the presentation i showed you like this no suppose this is a beam here certain load is applied okay so this is the support now if your load is applied from this side what will happen it will be like this will be like so this is what this is coming out to be this is known as what sagging or it will sag down so suppose here it will be the original beam but eventually it will what this one is coming down right this sagging is known as this in this phenomenon the bending moment is considered to be what positive and in the other phenomenon that means what hogging if it goes up like this so this negative just as of now just remember this sir, ah bolo in uh, in hogging sir uh, support support should be in above the no 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 like this the supports are same only but there are because of certain conditions it will be like this the beam is like this conditions are uh, <laughs> what condition you, you need then i'm try to understand now suppose this one is what simply supported right we draw right yes or no hello hello it's simply supported ah, yes sir it's simply we supported we will draw a fixed beam draw we are drawing a fixed beam here ok so in fixed beam suppose there may be certain what earthquakes because of which this portion yeah any problem Chongtham. because of this earthquake or something this some disturbances if this one comes like this and if this one come like this then that means what they are coming closer then what will happen it will be somewhat like this now yes or no yes, sir. coming in this side 
and if it is coming in this side then because of certain disturbances it may be because of earthquake or anything else then what will happen it will be behaving in that manner are you getting me now hello are you getting getting me now got it got it okay so this is how the hogging uh, and sagging are different got it okay or we can consider in the direction of the moment also like this so if it is in clockwise direction like this and if this is in anti clockwise so this is positive 10 now if it is anti clockwise in this direction and if it is clockwise in this direction then it is negative but the better thing you can re you should remember like this only it is more confident to remember this manner as of now just remember for sagging it is positive when negative and for shear force if it is clockwise like this then it is positive and if it is anti clockwise it is negative so if you have any doubts you can ask me No, from me, sir. What about others? What about others? No, sir. Okay, fine. Did you understand today's part? Did you understand today's part? Yes. So I shared the videos in the YouTube link now in the ERP. So you can refer to the PPT from that only. That will be much more helpful for you because I am explaining there also. If you simply refer to PPT, you may not understand what is there. Okay. Is it okay for everyone? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm.